Anxiety is of the enemy. Depression is of the enemy. Being a workaholic is of the enemy. You need to trust the God who created and the God who reigns over your life, your destiny, your church. Trust God and his plan because he has one and it's never failed. You may not have what you want, but if you cry Abba, you'll have what you need. And if you have what you need, it'll be enough to do what you're supposed to do. If you don't have something you're asking for, ask the Father why. He'll answer. Have you ever asked God why? Oh, I wouldn't dare ask God why. Well, Jesus did. The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Greetings, partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips, founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, and you are watching Fully Alive. I'm privileged to pastor one of the greatest churches in America, Abba's House in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And that's why I want to bring you a message today about our Abba Father. God is not a mean God. He is a just God, but He is a loving Father who longs for you to come home, to come back to your original identity and serve in his house. I hope today's message on the Father's heart will be a great blessing to all of you. The disciples woke up one morning anxious because their leader, their rabbi, their teacher was gone from them. He had slipped away before sunrise and they were worried about where he might be. As the sun came up, they began to look for their leader and hearing him before seeing him, they realized what their leader was doing. He was where he always was. He was in a position of prayer, crying out, Abba, Father. They heard him cry out to God as Father. They were astounded at his level of intimacy because they didn't understand God in an intimate way just yet. They begged him after hearing him pray, Lord, teach us to pray. And that led to the model prayer that we've taught you many times, our Father who art in heaven. See, Jews didn't dare utter the name of God. They didn't even want to say our translation, which is Yahweh or Jehovah. They refused to say that. They would substitute Adonai, which means Lord, because they thought the true name of God was so holy that they could not even approach God by calling his name. Now, I'm for awe and reverence and respect. In fact, I think we need more of it in today's church. But an incorrect interpretation of who God is will keep you from the kingdom. And God is not this mean, fire-breathing, angry old white man with white hair down to his knees waiting to throw you in hell. He is the king of all kings. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He loved you so much he gave his very best so that you would have purpose on earth and eternity in heaven. He gave us his son, not only as an example, but as a savior. And we're to follow his example and we're to accept his free gift of grace. Do we have the right to come to God as our father? The answer is a resounding yes. Why? Because of his son. Jesus revealed the Father to us and made a way for us to go directly to the Father and seek the kingdom and receive peace and healing and power and favor and anointing. When you cry out, Abba, things happen. Amen. Isaiah 9, 6, we learn in one of the few places where God is even referred to as a father that the son will be given and the kingdom government will be on his shoulders. And his name will be called, we've taught you this during the Christmas season, Pele, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. That was the prophecy that would come. When you look at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, 17 times in these chapters you hear the word Father or Abba. 
It speaks to us about the Father's heart. Jesus didn't have to preach 30 minutes. He didn't have to preach 45 minutes. He didn't need an organ. He didn't need to huck and buck. He didn't need to jump pews. It took him 18 minutes in a message to change the world. 18 minutes. And some of you don't feel like you've had anything unless you got two hours of falling out, rolling around, screaming. The bass is so loud you can't even move. Your hair's blowing off. Jesus sat there calmly on the mount, taught 18 minutes, never raised his voice and changed the world. So maybe it's not so much about style as spirit. Maybe it's not so much about preference as it is presence. Can I get an amen? I believe God can still change things. I believe his word is still true. If we'll listen, receive, believe, and serve the vision. What were the first words spoken by Jesus in the New Testament? He said, I must be about my father's business. You see, God wants you to be about his business. He does. He wants you to be about his business. Yes, you may be in business, but what about your business is God's business? What can you do in your business to shine your light for God? How can you use what you do to glorify the kingdom? The Father's heart is available to you. There is hope available to you this morning. There is power available to you. The Spirit wants to use you, but you need to open your heart to the heart of the Father. What, what does a loving God have to say about you? What does a loving God want for you? I wanna answer those questions from our text today. As we look at the Father's heart, the first principle I wanna to release to you is that God, the Father, longs for us to reach our full potential. In other words, if you love God, if you were truly a son or daughter in his kingdom, he predestined a path for you in the book of Romans. Predestination means set forth a path. He has a plan and a path for you. God wants you to not just get in on it, but excel in it. Can I get an amen? It's not enough just to accept Christ's free gift and not pursue the kingdom. Now the way you pursue it and the way I pursue it might be two different pathways, but we're on the same team. You have to do what you're gifted and called to do. That is your responsibility. Whatever God put in you, whatever gifts you have, the Father wants you to use your gifts to bring him glory. Can I get an amen? He wants you to stand up, step up, and stand out. You will never be who God wants you to be if you don't step out in faith. You know, Abraham had to leave, believe, and receive in order for him to be the father of a nation. He had to leave the comfort of his homeland. He had to believe God for a chosen son. Then he had to receive a substitutionary sacrifice, what we call grace, when God asked him to sacrifice his precious son. If you aren't willing to leave the comfort of your own condition, you'll never have everything God has for you. You will not receive a miracle if you're hanging around people with no faith. You will not receive your full potential if you're hanging around people who always bring up the negative, who never talk about what God can do, only what they're gonna do. Nobody cares what you're gonna do. People care about what God can do. And as Christians, we need to talk to people about who God is and what he can do, what his word says, not what we think. The Father longs for us to reach our full potential. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Our Father wants us to reach our full potential. Number two, he re rewards us when we obey him. Yes, it's easier to bless your children when they're obedient. Any parents in here? If they look at you and cuss you, you know, are you gonna get out the wallet or the pocketbook or the credit card? I'm not. You better at least know how to fake it with me. 
But everybody wants this religion that, that doesn't cost them anything, where they can do what they want. There are no consequences. There's no conviction. There, there's certainly no punishment. But God demands obedience from his true children. He will chasten you, it says in Hebrews. He will correct you. He will discipline you when you're outside of his will. How many of you have ever been corrected by God? How many of you have ever had a spiritual spanking from God? Hallelujah. Everybody. Except the few perfect ones, you know. We're okay. We'll pray for you to be honest. <laughs> Obedience is attainable, the scriptures teach us, through love. It's much easier to obey someone you love. Come on, somebody. If, if, whether it's your father, your mother, your leader, your grandmother, it doesn't matter. If you love them and they tell you what to do, they bring correction, it's easier to follow their instruction if you love them. Obedience is attainable through love. Agape love, service love, brotherly love, motherly love, all the loves. It's attainable through love. Next, obedience is attainable with humility. See, if you've got a spirit of pride on you, whether you're a 12-year-old boy or girl, or you're 70 years old, if you've got a spirit of pride on you, then you're not going to obey authority. You're not going to humble yourself and receive a word from God or a word from officials God has placed over you. But it's attainable with humility. Come humbly before the throne of grace. Obedience is attainable with honor. Everybody say honor. You know, honor is such an important word in the kingdom, and I've lived my life this way. I've honored my parents as an adult. More about that next week. I've honored authority figures, pastors, political leaders, some even I didn't agree with. I've always tried to walk in honor. I'm not pretending to be perfect up here. I'm just telling you the nature of my heart. I believe in honor. It's the gateway to provision. It's the gateway to prosperity. When you honor those that have gone before you, God opens up the windows of heaven. When you honor those he's placed above you, you will receive supernatural favor, healing, and blessing. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in my wife's career. When you walk in honor, even when you don't feel like it, God protects you and provides for you. It's attainable with honor. Obedience is also attainable with a renewed mind. It says in Romans 12, we're to renew our mind daily. If you have what the Bible calls a reprobate mind, a reprobate mind is a mind turned over to the enemy. And what does that mean? I know that sounds spooky, like a horror movie to some of you. That's not really what I mean. I mean, your mind has been in the gutter so long. It could be the gutter of religion. It could be the gutter of sin, the gutter of pornography. It could be the gutter of, you know, advancing in your own agenda, not God's, whatever it may be. You've been in the gutter so long, your mind has been turned over to the enemy. So it's playing tricks on you and your mind is leading you into demonic territory. It's causing you to sin and trespass against the things of God. And that's why it says we're to not only renew our mind, we're to set our mind on things above. Obedience is attainable when you have the right mindset. Number three, what does the Father think about you? What does he say to you? What does he offer you? Number three, he brings peace to your soul. Everybody say shalom. It says in Matthew chapter six, verse four, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. In other words, there's something to be said about the secret place and things done in secret with the father. Is everybody with me? So God honors what goes on in private more than he does in public. He rewards you in public but he's rewarding you because he's honoring you for what you've done and prayed and sowed in private. Verse six of Matthew chapter six, but you, everybody say me, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret, again, will reward openly. Fast forward to Matthew six, verse 18, same message, same teaching. 
So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret, here it is again, third time, will reward you openly. The secret place is important. Intimacy with the father is important. Praying, fasting, sowing, working things out with the father, those times are precious to God. It proves that you don't just work for him, you're not just chained to him, that you love him. And when a child loves their daddy, the daddy wants to serve and do for the child. And we're called to have intimacy with our Abba Father. Can I get an amen? God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. There's something in all of us that needs a father, that needs a covering, that needs confidence. He brings peace to your soul overcoming the orphan spirit. Next, overcoming a restless spirit. What is a restless spirit, demonic spirit? It's a person who, because of the enemy, doesn't have the ability to rest. It's an identity issue just like the orphan spirit. People feel like if they work their way to God, he'll love them more. And listen, we're begging for volunteers. I probably should have skipped this one. <laughs> but do you know that no matter how hard you work, it doesn't change the Father's love for you one bit. His love is eternal, it's everlasting. It never fails. It believes all things. Even when you lie, it believes all things. And there are people who can't rest because they haven't dealt with their pain, their sin, their struggle, and they're, they're guilty. And the way they work through their pain is working either in the kingdom or in business or in money and finances. Let me just work, 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 work because it brings me peace. But there's always a feeling that the work didn't get done. And even Jesus believed in a Sabbath day. And everyone needs to rest and celebrate the goodness of God occasionally. Take time with your family. Take times for the things that matter. A restless spirit. Paul would say, chained to a Roman's guard in Philippians, be anxious for nothing. But in every situation, by prayer, petition, thanksgiving, present your request to God. When you overcome demonic spirits, you are conquering your fears. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Well, that's why we're to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Anxiety is of the enemy. Depression is of the enemy. Being a workaholic is of the enemy. You need to trust the God who created and the God who reigns over your life, your destiny, your church. Trust God and his plan because he has one and it's never failed. Amen. Listen, God will turn something on its head in 24 hours if he wants it turned on its head. Matthew 6, 8, he's speaking of the prayer life and the Pharisees, he said, don't be like them. Don't have to be seen by everybody. For your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him, amen? So why do we have to ask him if he already knows? Because he longs for intimacy with his children. No one wants to be used and abused. He wants an authentic relationship with his children. It goes on to say in Matthew 6, we read it to you about the birds of the air and the clothes. Our initial passage of scripture teaches us number four, that the Father knows how to meet our needs. Amen? You may not have what you want, but if you cry, Abba, you'll have what you need. And if you have what you need, it'll be enough to do what you're supposed to do. If you don't have something you're asking for, ask the Father why. He'll answer. Have you ever asked God why? Oh, I wouldn't dare ask God why. Well. Jesus did, Gideon did, Moses did. 
Ruth did. Y'all want me to keep going or y'all getting this? It's okay to ask God why. He appreciates the conversation. He appreciates the humility, the intimacy, the authenticity. Number five, our father hears our prayers. I've asked Ron to bring a chair out here just for a moment. I heard a story about a young lady. Her father had a terminal illness. He was bedridden at her home. She called a local minister, asked the minister to come pray with her dying father. And the minister came to the home and asked Johnny, her father, how are you doing, Johnny? Johnny said, I'm okay. Would you please shut the door? And he shut the door and the pastor came close and he said, Pastor, I, I want to talk to you about something. He said, you know, I, I, I've never really known how to pray. And I always struggled with talking to God. I always felt awkward about it. I always felt strange about it. But years ago, a pastor taught me to put a chair beside me and pray to that chair as if Jesus were sitting there. The pastor taught me to, by faith, see Jesus in the chair. And as that man lay there dying, there was a chair sitting opposite of where the preacher was standing. The preacher prayed with him and the preacher left. A few weeks later, the daughter called the preacher and said, my dad's passed away. The daughter didn't know what they discussed. In fact, the father never told her about this routine because the father was afraid she would think he was mentally ill talking to a chair. She called the preacher and said, my father's just passed away. The pastor said, did he go in peace? She said, yeah, he went in peace, but there was something strange, preacher. She said, I came into the room and his head and arms were laid on that chair. And the minister began to cry. He remembered that conversation. Listen, I could teach you intercession, praying on behalf of someone else. I could teach you supplication, the ask and the expect. I could teach you thanksgiving. But let me just simplify it. Some of you need to pull a chair up into your life for Jesus. Some of you need to invite Jesus to your table, to your bedside, to your business. Some of you need to pull up a chair for Jesus. And you need to, in faith, speak to that chair as if Jesus himself was sitting there. Abba's house, we are not only a house of grace, we're to be a house of prayer as well. The Bible promises us that when we go into our room and we go into the secret place and we cry out to our Father that he'll answer us. And I wanna challenge this church today to be a place of prayer, intercession, not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays, not just in small groups, at home, in your car, in the secret place. Your secret place may be by the lake. Mine's in an office. I don't know. Yours might be in the shower. I don't know. Find you a place where you can talk to God, where you can cry out, Abba, through the saving grace of Jesus, and it will change your life. Number six. Our Father forgives our sins, gives us the ability to forgive people that have hurt us. Listen, I wish some of you could do this work for about a year. You'll learn to forgive quickly and heal quickly. Our Father forgives our sins. If you have sin in your life today, if you cry out, Abba, through Jesus, he'll forgive you. He'll save you. He'll give you a new start. That's the heart of the Father, to restore and redeem you. Number seven, our Father gives us an eternal inheritance. When we seek first his kingdom, we have access to the king's goods, to wealth and resources and ideas, and patterns, patents, potential. 
we have access to the king's wisdom and the king's wealth. Can I get an amen, somebody? And it comes by way of the Holy Spirit. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those he loves? I land this plane right here. Our Father opens heaven for us. It says in Matthew chapter 7, one chapter later, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. You have an inheritance waiting on you. Don't be like the prodigal and squander it on worldly living. Stay in covenant with daddy and watch what God will do. I wanna challenge you into a new place of intimacy with the Father. You see, religion teaches us that we have to do things to be right with God. But by grace, we get to do things because we want to be in unity with God. A completely different mindset. Have to versus get to. I want to bring grace into your life and that starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't connect with the Father intimately until you know Jesus. Jesus said it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So if you need intimacy with the Father, need to be redeemed, long for heaven, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you're alive and hearing me pray. Please come into my heart and save me, Lord Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are connected with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer that you find a good church home. You can connect with us at RonniePhillips.org. We'll pray for you. We'll help you get started in your relationship with Christ. And perhaps God has called some of you out there to be a partner with this ministry. Listen, we're not on TV because we're models or we're good looking. We're on TV because we pay to be. We're on the internet streaming because we pay to be because we believe this kingdom message is for right now. If you believe that with us, consider sowing a seed, making a donation, coming in partnership with this ministry. You can do all of that at RonniePhillips.org. Thank you for watching Fully Alive. And we'll see you next time. I want to invite you to our annual new wine gathering here at Abba's house in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's going to be off the chains. We will have morning speakers, evening speakers, dynamic worship leaders. It's going to be kingdom. It's going to be power packed. You're going to learn and you're going to receive hope for your next season. So sign up now. Join us at the New Wine Gathering, September 15th through the 18th. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.